Glenn Kirshner here. Please enjoy this video on the Political Voices Network. Well, you know, and Glenn, I, I guess I was saying the line I always thought of with OJ. I was like, you know, justice isn't necessarily black or white. It's green. Mm -hmm. You know, he was able to buy enough reasonable doubt. And I think any reasonable person can see that Donald Trump has... I, I, there are two systems of justice. One, apparently, that's only for Donald Trump, that just in which extraordinary things happen. I mean, obviously, this trial is supposed to start Monday, but I'm sure you're like everybody else. that You're like, OK, well, let's see what last minute <laughs> BS he pulls because, you know, he will. Right. He, he will. But I think it will be unsuccessful. Yeah. One of the yeah. last, you know, dirty tricks that his lawyers may pull out of their dirty trick bag is to have Donald Trump try to fire his defense team, yeah. right. go into court on Monday and say, I'm unrepresented. I need to hire new lawyers. They need six months to prepare. Oh, yeah. The good news is lots of people have asked the question, can that succeed? The answer is almost certainly no, because when a client tries to fire a lawyer, the lawyer has to file a motion to withdraw with the court. The judge has the discretion to deny the motion to withdraw and force the lawyer to stay on the case and go to trial. I've had defendants pull that tactic before. Yeah. It's never worked. But, you know, will Donald Trump fall down and bump his head? Will he get sick? Will he? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But you know what? Right. He wants to be a day one dictator. He's going to be a day one defendant come Monday. I believe yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You said could you tweeted could about accountability finally be coming for Donald Trump. Um, here's the other cold sweat thing we have on our side, though, as you, we've always said, it only takes one juror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to, you know, it only takes one maggot to lie to get on the jury. Um, I, we were talking about, you know, OJ jurors being interviewed after the verdict. And one of them was like, well, we just didn't see any evidence. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh my God. Yeah. So, you know, this is, I'm reading this piece. Every defendant entitled to a fair and impartial jury, jury, um, jury, but the process to find one can be long and taxing, particularly in a high profile trial, such as the one in New York uh, with Trump. So, talk to us about jury selection. Yeah, I've picked a lot of juries, including in very high stakes cases like, you know, lengthy RICO trials in, in federal court in D.C. And here's what I'll say. First of all, um, most people, when they raise their right hand and they're sworn in during jury selection, they actually take the oath pretty seriously. And there are repercussions if they lie to the court about their suitability to sit as a juror. But the ones who are trying to do something crooked or nefarious, either to get on a jury or to avoid, you know, being selected as a juror, the parties and the judge are usually pretty good at spotting it, sniffing it out and making sure it doesn't infect the proceedings. I am confident that they will seat a fair and impartial jury. I don't think there are going to be any moles on the jury. Um, there are lots of ways to guard against that. But you know what, Steph? Let one mole somehow get past all of the, gu the guardrails and sneak on the jury and hang the jury, hang the, the jury 11 to 1 for conviction. That's the beauty of a retrial. You go back to a retrial. Mm -hmm. You do it again. You get it. You do it even better the second time and you win a conviction. I had a lot of 11 to one hung juries that resulted in a conviction the second time around. And holding Donald Trump accountable is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Yeah, so I'll say. we're, we're going to get there. OK. All right. Yay. He always sends a tingle up my leg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, here's my concern on the other side, as we've said, is that good people are going to be terrified. <laughs> to, you know, fair people are going to be terrified to be on the jury. Uh, on cue, Trump fired something of a warning shot this morning in the form of a fundraising email. The subject line read, 72 hours until all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. He's gotten so good at these, like, you know, and then he has some sort of plausible de de deniability that, oh, that wasn't a call to violence. Um, it says, now's the time to help me save America, in all caps, and chip in. Of course, it's, you know, right. for money. Right. But he says, if we fail to have a massive outpouring of peaceful patriotic support, he, he always has the one line in there. Um, right here, right now, all hell will break loose. Does that not st sound like stand back and stand by? <laughs> stand back and stand by. Come to D.C. on January 6th will be wild. It will be a bloodbath if I don't get elected. And now his latest call to violence, all hell will break loose. You know, what I'm most disappointed about, Steph, is that the institutions of government and the good people who populate those institutions have not uh, asserted the rule of law the way it was designed to be asserted yeah. and put him in pretrial detention to stop the violence, stop the dang violence, it's, because we know exactly what he's doing. Yeah, Glenn, it sounded to me like he was threatening his own base. 
because as we know, there's been very little turnout in any of these trials where he says, people aren't going to stand for this, it's going to be huge. You know, there's nobody, yeah. practically. Right. So it's almost like he was threatening them. If there isn't a huge, peaceful turnout or whatever, all hell's going to break loose. I mean, it's just, God, thuggery on top of thuggery. I mean, it seems to me the reason he's so panicked is you tweeted prosecution witnesses in the New York case, Cohen, Stormy Daniels, Hope Hicks, David Becker, and others spell real trouble for Trump. It seems like why he is so desperate to stop this. These are all his own people, all his own insiders. He already knows what they're going to say, right? I mean, it, yeah, yeah. On, on the evidence, on the evidence, Donald Trump is done. And, you know, I went back and reread the 44 paragraph statement of facts that was released. It was released about a year ago yeah. together with the indictment. It's New York's version of a speaking indictment. And you look right in the middle of it. It's paragraph 19. Remember when Donald Trump and his lackeys and his flunkies and his mouthpieces were saying, wait, wait, wait. OK, if he made these payments, it was just to protect Melania's feelings. He didn't want her to find out about it. Read paragraph 19. It said that even after Donald Trump had struck the deal with Stormy Daniels to make these hush money payments, he directed Michael Cohen. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's delay the payments until after the election that way, we don't have to pay her yeah. because it won't matter if it comes out after the election. Yeah. Think about That's the it. jury gets Game that over. evidence. Mm -hmm. The jury is going to despise this big orange blowhard because not only does he have this relationship with Stormy Daniels right after the birth of his son, not only does he strike this dirty deal to pay her off to keep her mouth shut, but then he wants to stiff her on the payment. Yeah. Plus, it undercuts yeah. the notion and, that he's trying to hide it from Melania. And you forget there's tape on this, too. There's so many like, tapes, Glenn, that you forget. He's on tape with Michael Cohen. And he's like, let's write a check. And Michael Cohen's like, nah, 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 nah. cash, cash, cash. <laughs> Like, like anyone does when they're doing something on the up and up. I mean, and then you like, forget. Step, go ahead. This is like when I had wiretap cases. All I had to do was press play and the jury could hear the defendant yeah. sitting right there in the defense chair saying, I'm going to need 10 kilos by yeah. Friday. Yeah. I'm thinking they were engaged in a drug deal. Mm -hmm. Well, you, as you said it on Twitter, you, for those of us who've been determined to call Trump's New York case what it really is, an election interference case with Trump committing crimes to gain unfair advantage in the 2016 election, it's nice to see how Judge Mershon will instruct the jury regarding the nature of the case, and you included the jury instructions. I feel like the part we keep forgetting about, not forgetting, but just it doesn't get as, is the National Enquirer and David Pecker and the, you know, uh, what's her name, Karen McDougal, that she, he was having an affair with while Melania was pregnant mm -hmm. and, you know, I, that whole the catch and kill thing that which was another massive amount of election interference. Then you add the fraudulent business thing that he's trying to hide, you know, these payoffs as legal things. That's fraudulent business uh, uh What's it called, Glenn? What's the legal thing? Falsifying <laughs> business records. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. And, and Steph, David Pecker, you can't make that name no. up in a case involving porn stars and playmates. Unless it's Chubb um, Insurance. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I mean, David Pecker is not going to come in and testify that, you know what, I was catching and killing these damaging stories about Donald Trump's dalliances because I was trying to keep it from Melania. Come on now. We all know this was election interference. And I have to tell you, I was thrilled when I saw Judge Mershon in his opening statement to the jury about what we call the nature of the case, telling them, folks, the, uh, the allegations are all about election interference in the 2016 presidential election. Yeah. Hey, all. Glenn Kirshner here. I hope you'll join me on my new audio podcast, Justice Matters. I'll be using my 30 years as a federal prosecutor and army JAG to unpack, break down, and explain the legal issues of the day, particularly where the legal intersects with the political. Please look for Justice Matters with Glenn Kirshner wherever you generally get your podcasts.